The death toll in Gaza has crossed 18,000 as Israel's brutal offensive continues and the international community plans to discuss the issue again. What is the latest from the besieged enclave? Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is set to meet US President Joe Biden and leaders of Congress on Tuesday in a desperate bid for more funds. What is happening with the Russia-Ukraine war? This is The Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. After the failure of the UN Security Council to pass a resolution on the ceasefire in Gaza, this was due to the US veto of course, the UN General Assembly is set to discuss the situation on Tuesday. This was after Egypt and Mauritania requested a special meeting. Now, UNGA resolutions are not enforceable, although the session will most likely prove once again how most countries in the world are pressing for a ceasefire. Israel, however, continues to be defiant and is relentlessly attacking Gaza. We go to Abdul for more details. Abdul, before the weekend, we saw that the UN Security Council resolution on a ceasefire was vetoed by the United States and Israel, of course, welcoming that decision, continuing its assaults. But so first of all, could you maybe take us through what is the latest from, uh, from Gaza, from the situation over there, from the attacks and from the humanitarian perspective? Uh, inside Gaza, the situation is becoming bad to worse every day and there is a greater need now in fact, every day there is a, a greater need uh, to Im impose immediate ceasefire because uh, the death toll, the people, Palestinians, number of Palestinians killed is now uh, crossing 18,000. Uh, uh, as per the reports from the ground, the number of people injured is crossing 50,000 uh, 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 Palestinians. Apart from all these things, the number of displaced is almost equal to the entire population of uh, uh, the pre-war Gaza, around 2.2 uh, million people. Uh, if you see, uh, uh, there are ground offensive uh, going on all across Gaza and particularly the southern Gaza, where Israeli forces apparently are now dropping uh, weapons from the uh, uh, sky, basically because they think that the operation needs to continue the way it is continuing uh, in full flesh, despite the fact that the refugee camps, uh, the uh, temporary shelters, uh, uh, wherever people are taking shelter, uh, whether they are run by UNRWA or whether they are uh, managed by the local uh, humanitarian groups, none of them are safe. And therefore, the uh, the number of people, uh, you, we can safely say that almost entire population in Gaza is now uh, is without any shelter and there is no place in Gaza which is safe. Uh, of course, this, has all, this also means that overall humanitarian situation, as we have been talking about all these days, is uh, becoming more and more unmanageable. There, there is no system there. Uh, it is becoming, uh, there is complete breakdown uh, in terms of uh, food supply, in terms of uh, supply of medicines, in terms in terms of providing people basic uh, uh, necessities like drinking water. And therefore, the overall situation inside Gaza uh, is completely, has completely collapsed uh, uh, in the last few days. Uh, and despite all that, uh, there is an intensified attack uh, which uh, Israel is carrying out at this moment all across uh, the besieged uh, Palestinian territory. Right, Abdul, in this context, also interesting to note that Egypt and Mauritania have also moved, have invoked another section of the Charter calling for General Assembly. What is this about? Well, this is about uh, calling for an immediate General Assembly meeting, uh, uh, which basically, of course, uh, as per the rules of the United Nations Charter, will not have any uh, legal validity beyond its having a political, uh, apart from having a political Messaging, uh, just like uh, what we saw during uh, Secretary General invoking Article 99 of the United Nations Charter, uh, basically asking the Security Council to meet, uh, as it was not meeting for various reasons, for a very long time to discuss the situation in Gaza. This is another attempt, uh, but at this time in General Assembly, to basically unite uh, behind the call for peace by all the countries uh, which basically are concerned about what is happening. As we all know, that uh, the Secur Sec Security Council meeting was inconclusive because US 
basically exercised its right to veto, uh, and that was the only country which basically voted against uh, the resolution which demanded the uh, ceasefire in exchange of the release of the hostages. So it is not sure even, uh, of course, uh, legally speaking, even if the entire, uh, uh, all 190 plus members of the United Nations General Assembly vote in support of uh, uh, a resolution which asks for a ceasefire in Gaza, it of course will have no legal validity. It, but of course, it, it has a political message. So that is only, uh, 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 this is the only thing which basically comes out from this particular attempt, uh, that this will be an attempt to pressurize the superpowers, the, uh, the country which veto, to kind of listen to the, uh, the views of the world community and act on uh, implementing some kind of uh, ceasefire uh, inside Gaza. Right, Abdul, in this context, also wanted to uh, ask you about what the global response has been, what is what is happening in the region with regard to this, uh, you know, genocidal war and what has also been the response uh, in in recent times of uh, global, uh, the international community? The, well, uh, if you see uh, the US and its allies, particularly the European allies, UK, France, and some other countries have continued to uh, kind of express their support to Israeli war inside Gaza. In fact, uh, on uh, Monday, uh, basically the three, all these three European countries, uh, UK, sorry, uh, France, Germany, and uh, others basically wrote to the uh, European uh, Union uh, asking to impose sanctions against Hamas to show solidarity uh, with Israel. So uh, wh when it comes to uh, the United States and its allies in Europe, they continue to uh, support the massacre, the genocide in Gaza. There has not, not, there has been no change in their stance. But of course, the rest of the world is completely. Uh, uh, you can see there is a major shift which is happening. That is, by and large, there is a consensus emerging all across the world. Uh, that there is an immediate need for a ceasefire, no matter what uh, uh, the situation, uh, whether some of those countries who agree with Israel to right, uh, Israel's right to self-defense, even they have started calling for ceasefire, given the fact that the overall situation in Gaza is now beyond any, uh, 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 any describable uh, 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 crisis, which uh, world has seen in last few centuries, a few decades at least. Uh, and, uh, if you see, there is, uh, in the region, uh, of course, there is Hezbollah and who, uh, the Yemen, uh, Yemen, which basically have, have taken uh, actions against Israeli uh, uh, war machine. In fact, uh, there has been an escalation of, uh, you can say, uh, of, uh, a kind of confrontation between Hamas, sorry, between Hezbollah and Israelis uh, in the recent days, few days. Uh, then the Houthis have said that they are complete, they're going to completely block the Red Sea, uh, which is crucial for the international trade and crucial for Israel's, uh, 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 basically, uh, Israel's imports uh, or even exports. Uh, uh, and so that is one thing which is happening, of course. Uh, uh, also, the attacks on uh, U.S. establishment have also increased in the last few days. Uh, there are countries like Iran and there are uh, others, in fact, in the region who have basically started uh, speaking as uh, uh, about uh, greater uh, possibility of regional escalation if the war continues for uh, more days. And, and therefore, the overall situation in the region is quite, uh, uh, you can say, uh, fragile, quite volatile. Uh, anything can happen any moment. Primarily because Israel does not has has stopped listening to uh, uh, their repeated calls for ceasefire and their repeated calls for kind of uh, 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 kind of uh, 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 implementing a larger peace uh, in the region. Thanks, Abdul. We'll come back to you for the other story of the day, which also has to do with the war. That's the Russia-Ukraine war.
Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will be in Washington on Tuesday to meet with US leaders in a desperate bid to gain more funds. The situation does not look very good for Zelensky. The Ukrainian counter-offensive is ground to halt. There are reports of differences in the country's leadership. And across the West, many influential voices are calling for re-examining the aid provided for the war. Recently, US Republicans blocked more military aid to Ukraine due to internal political squabbles. We go back to Abdul to understand what is happening with Ukraine and the war. Uh, welcome back, Abdul. So, uh, Zelensky meeting Joe Biden at a very crucial time. Uh, things do not look very good for Ukraine at this point of time. And, uh, you know, last week we saw what happened to that resolution regarding uh, the sanction of funds as well. So, what uh, could you elaborate a bit more on the political and military context that's taking place? Uh, Zelensky is visiting US uh, on Tuesday, primarily because he wants to push for uh, uh, the $60 billion uh, aid, which, of course, as you rightly pointed out, was uh, rejected by the uh, uh, Republicans uh, in the uh, in U.S. Congress, primarily because they have there is a growing concern in the U.S. Uh, about the amount of money they are spending uh, in, uh, in, in Ukraine, where nothing concrete is happening. Their so-called uh, attempts to kind of push back Russians has not uh, uh, resulted in any actual uh, material uh, physical gains. And in fact, the Russians are now pushing for further uh, expansion uh, of their control inside uh, uh, the, uh, the region. Uh, and that basically has uh, uh, forced uh, Zelensky to look for uh, additional funds. There is one more thing which uh, one should remember that the funds which were coming from other uh, uh, partners, uh, the NATO countries or the European countries, is also not flowing as per the expectations which Ukrainians had. And, and that basically would mean that if this dries out, uh, if this continues for a longer time, the Ukrainians will have no financial uh, uh, and military backing which will ultimately lead to uh, them conceding more and more ground to the Russians. And they, that's the calculation with which Zelensky is visiting. And one should remember that this is not easy, primarily because uh, uh, the, the, the opinion, uh, the popular opinion inside U.S. has is basically gradually shifting away from Ukraine. Uh, in, the, in fact, there are surveys which point out that majority of the people in U.S. do not feel uh, very happy about the fact that a large uh, amount of their tax, their money is basically spent in Ukraine without uh, any concrete results on the ground. And uh, so the Republicans have, it seems, have read it uh, 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 in some way. And that that and they have been basically been very vocal in the recent uh, days about uh, continuing uh, continuing the the policy of financing the Ukrainian war, and therefore they have in fact been grown vocal about uh, 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 what they call the result oriented uh, funding, and that's th this is the context in which Zelensky is visiting. This is exactly uh, uh, the time Zelensky was there in U uh, in US last year also, and uh, we were. There was a proposal, uh, a ridiculous proposal, which was rejected by the Russians and rest of the uh, uh, players involved. But yeah, this is one should remember that this is this is this is exactly the time when the last time Zelensky was there in the U.S. So it has been a year. Uh, yeah. Right, Abdul, we don't talk about the war that often these days, but what seems to have happened is definitely a kind of a deadlock. The Ukrainians not being able to make substantial gains in any part, like you said. And, uh, you know, uh, some recent articles exposing the kind of issues that went into this, into the counteroffensive, which did not really work. So a lot of doubt across many parts of the world, especially populations. But it does seem that governments nonetheless continue to spread, the governments of the West are continue to back uh, you know, uh, the Ukraine on its policies and uh, the European Union also meeting to discuss some of these issues also, there is, although there is dissent inside as well. Exactly. Uh, so, see, there is, uh, when it comes to political backing, uh, uh, saying that we are with Ukraine, that has not uh, gone down. The rhetorical support to the uh, Ukrainian war has not gone down. There is, in fact, there is a push within these European countries. There is a section which basically wants uh, the the aid the military aid which uh, these countries are providing in fact uk has 
announced that they are going to provide uh, uh, navy uh, artillery or uh, uh, tanks uh, to basically to, to Ukrainian forces. So yes, there is continuous uh, military and political backing to Ukrainian war, uh, um, uh, to Ukraine's war effort. Uh, but uh, the amount of which, uh, that's what uh, uh, one needs to see, that the rhetorical and military uh, support uh, the actual material support. Of course, there is a pressure within these countries because none of these countries are doing financially quite well, uh, including the US. And, and they basically are looking for ways to kind of find an excuse to kind of reduce uh, their uh, amount of uh, uh, finance finances, which is basically draining their own finances. Uh, and therefore, that you will see that there is an attempt to kind of balance uh, the uh, uh, the lack of uh, material support with the more uh, fierce rhetorical uh, support to Ukrainians. And one, this is one. Uh, the another also that there is a, there are reports, of course, not confirmed, about the growing uh, uh, disenchantments with the Ukrainian leadership. Uh, among the uh, European countries, uh, primarily because they think that there is a, a, a kind of, kind of, some kind of uh, attempt to kind of shuffle the money, which basically is for money and material support, which is primarily to fight against the Russians, is basically used for some other purposes which are not accountable. Accountable, and so all of these basically the lack of trust in the Ukrainian leadership, uh, the lack of results on the grounds, and their own financial compulsions have basically uh, pushed some of these countries to talk about uh, uh, more aggressively about providing support to Ukrainians, but at the same time looking ways to kind of reduce it in one way or another. So this basically has to happen. It is now the Two years, the war is going to complete two years uh, in uh, in few months. And uh, for continuously for two years, providing the similar amount of financial uh, support to Ukrainians, of course, uh, has uh, its own financial and political implications. And most of these countries are facing it. And I, if it continues, they will face more in the coming days. Well, Abdul, thank you for your analysis. We'll watch what happens uh, in the US on Tuesday. What is the pitch Zelensky makes for more aid and how it is received by the Republican Democrat leaderships? Thank you so much. That's all we have in today's episode. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button.